Hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel, and being our first official art talk of 2017, a very happy new year to you. Now, a student of mine got in touch with me, not so distant past, um, very discouraged and stressed out about the fact that he was working this part-time job that was really sapping his energy. And he wanted to invest this energy towards being creative and building his portfolio. And he was doing it, but he was really scraping by. He, was, he really felt like he was stretching himself out too much and it was really draining him. And he got in touch with me because he was, he was saying, Adam, I, I need to find a way to be able to cope with this kind of stuff because, you know, I want to have a successful career. And he was looking for answers. So what was my advice to him? Well, imagine yourself being in a job where you where your ability to perform is a matter of life and death for somebody else not for yourself for somebody else it's a lot easier to abuse us than it is to abuse others imagine you're a doctor and there's a little boy a little you know 10 12 year old boy who's wheeled into the room who's leg has been severed off because he got hit by a car and he says he suffered serious head trauma and he's starting to convulse and the parents are there and they're freaking out sorry for freaking you out if i'm being too descriptive but i really want to set a real stressful situation for you and this kid if he doesn't get treated now he's gonna die and his parents are sitting there with this look of desperation in their face like you got to save our boy right and they're completely wiped out and the kid is is slurring and and you're just in this all of a sudden, incredibly intense do or die situation. In the case of a doctor, if he loses his cool, if he freaks out, if he gets hyper absorbed in the reality of this immediate moment, he won't do his job. He'll freak out and that kid will die. So that doctor does not have a choice. So what a doctor has to deal with is this very sh short term, short burst of incredibly high stress, high adrenaline that forces him in that moment to perform his duty. Artists have the same level of stress to deal with. And you're sitting there going, really, how so? We deal with the same, total the same quantity of stress and it can have exactly the same impact on our lives. However, it's not a short, it's not a, it's not a six to 12 hour burst of intense, of intense stress. It's a, 5, 10, 15, 20, 40, 50 year stretched out, prolonged stress. If we don't know how to address this stress properly. Okay. Now, the one thing I want to put emphasis on here before I even move forward is as artists, it's very often our tendency to think that we're on the bottom of the food chain as far as the employment industry is concerned. Yes, I've heard the expression, the starving artist a million times. I've come from an entire family of artists, okay? But I want to really bring us into 2017 to say that's not the case anymore. In my mentorship, I've taught programmers, accountants, engineers, lawyers that may or may not be looking to start a new career in art, but have all expressed in equal abundance, their frustrations with being frustrations being able to find work, their financial instability, their being laid off, their whatever the case might be. It's no longer an artist exclusive problem. It belongs to everybody now. So you're no longer at the bottom of the food chain. We're all at the bottom of the food chain. So that's the first thing I want to say to you. The second thing is when as a professional artist we have to develop this sense of professional disassociation the same as doctors do a doctor needs to disconnect from from his impulsive fight or flight response when looking at a tra when when analyzing and being responsible for taking care of a traumatic situation in our own careers we're dealing with a job we can't stand. It's sapping our energy. We've got three kids to take care of and you still got a job to do. You have to find a way to disconnect yourself from that. And the way you do that is by emotionally setting times for yourself. This is how I do it in my own career. I'm a completely independent artist. I'm financially independent. I'm career independent. I have my online school. I work as a freelancer. I have everything that I do is right behind you. This is my setup for work. I have nobody waiting on me to show up at their office at nine o'clock in the morning. I set that schedule for myself. The only way I could be a full-time dad and actually be there with my kids and be a full-time teacher 
and be a full-time freelancer and take care of myself and go to the gym and eat well and not sit on my ass for 12 hours and get lower back herniated discs and and uh, still have time to play video games once in a while and have fun is because I've learned how to compartmentalize my time and my energy, but most importantly, respect those decisions I make, okay? Because very often, one of the people say, I'm not really the freelance type because I don't really have the discipline to do it. What they're really saying is, nobody's ever showed me how to discipline my own time. So what did he do? Because there's no particular framework, you end up scattering yourself about and that overwhelms you, so you just spend 12 hours playing World of Warcraft, right? Instead of doing that, you need to set a reminder for yourself. And to me, as far as I'm concerned, I could not survive without my calendar. And there's many options. There's many different alternatives for calendar. I personally love Google calendars because it syncs with everything. It syncs with my phone, on my computer. I love Google calendar. It all works within that whole Google ecosystem. I'm super happy with it. By having a calendar, it allows me a chance to see when I'm needed here, when I'm needed there, when I'm needed here, when I'm needed there, and to find those little gaps. And in this gap, I've got a two hour gap there, go to the gym. I've got a half hour gap there, make myself a healthy lunch. Go to the store and pick up some healthy food to eat, okay? Um, I've got another gap right there. This is my, I've got a good chunk of th three to four hours there in my day. I'm going to invest that into drawing, working on my freelance work, uh, building my own portfolio, moving forward artistically, all right? And because I'm only, in, I'm, I'm using my time, I'm not using my time to twiddle my fingers, to sit there and think of what's the next important thing to do. I have a schedule that I've set, but most importantly, I respect the schedule I made. It allows me to always invest my energy in a productive way. Is it difficult? Absolutely not. But the most important ingredient on in all of this is when you make that commitment to yourself about that time, you never break that promise to yourself. Respecting it yourself is like driving. It's easy to drive. Get behind the wheel, gas pedal, brake pedal, drive. If you drive stick shift, then you change the gears, right? But what you have to look out for is other drivers. That's what makes you a good driver. It's not the fact that you're good at turning a steering wheel. It's the fact that you're aware of the environment around you. And very often, other people in your life, confide in we're not talking about kids or your, or your loved one or your family. If you have people in your life that A, don't respect your time, when you are being reasonable about it, of course, if they don't respect your time, they don't respect your ambition, they don't respect what you're going to do, my personal opinion is get them out of your life. If you have people that call you 25 times a day and expect to have four-hour conversations because it's the equivalent of somebody walking in to your studio when you're in the middle of working on a job and saying, do you want to go for lunch? No, I'm in a job right now. If I get up and go for lunch, I'm going to get fired. You have to have that same vigilance with your own time. Now, of course, it doesn't mean to be a douche about it. You don't have to be rude about it. You have, you have to respect your own commitment to yourself as if somebody else was paying you to respect it, but you're doing it yourself. But there's a flip side to this because a lot of people get so strict on their time. They get so, they get, become such sticklers with their time that they become, start to become antisocial, that they start to become so hard hard on themselves about it, that they start to burn themselves out about it. So it's important for you to be able to find a sense of balance in this. And one of the important ways of finding balance is to A, find time for yourself and make sure that other people get your time as well. You're not just dedicating all that time to yourself, but you also reserve time for yourself to do things that you love, that aren't career art minded. You have to be able to have fun. You have to be able to let go. If you're a gamer, Play video games, you know? Find a couple of hours of the night after you put the kids to bed to play some video games. You don't have to spend every waking moment that you have drawing, 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 drawing. You only need to, I'd say a healthy amount if you're somebody who works full time and everything like that, a healthy amount of time to dedicate towards drawing is two hours, three, if you can afford, if you can afford it, four, five. But once your back starts to hurt, get off your ass and do something else, okay? It's all about balance. And I learned that lesson from a guy at my gym who was 85 and he looks like a 55 year old and he had five kids. And I said, how the hell do you look that good? And he said, balance. I have a drink every now and then. I have a cigar every now and then. Not that I would ever smoke again, right? I, 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 I like to go out and have fun with my wife. I like to go on a date. It's not all work for me. It's a balance of both. If I do too much of one, too much of the other, 
the imbalance starts to take its toll on my body. And I've always found a way of respecting that balance in life. Never too much, never too little. But when you do set that time for yourself, stick to it. And when it comes to the fact that you're working that part-time job to pay the bills, because you got to pay the bills, then learn to compartmentalize that energy. This is my energy for my job. And learn the discipline of when I walk away from that, my life depends on the fact that I forget about the fact that I ever even ex- I ever even stepped into that building. So when I sit down to draw, this is my drawing time. And I'm going to invest my time, my energy, and my real passion, what really matters, into those few hours that, I, that I've invested towards my learning, towards my growth, towards building my portfolio. And if you do that on a daily, consistent basis, your productivity shoots up. Because instead of trying to cram everything into one day, you stretch yourself out a little bit further, but give yourself a reasonable timeline. And in that space of one month, two months, you've built an entire portfolio versus trying to cram that into a day and after six months, getting absolutely nothing done or even worse, spending the next 40 years and getting nothing done. All right. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed my art talk. Like I say at the end of every video, remember my my mentorship, Lucid Pixel, uh, private online mentorship, and I am I do have spots opening up in the next uh, the next few months, so you can give me a shout for that. All of the information below, as well as the Brush Sauce Theater, with Tyler Edlin, of course, the 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 wonderful Tyler Edlin, and the whole Brush Sauce Theater community. So you can go and join up, mm-hmm. and I believe Tyler Edlin also had. Um, he also just started a Google Hangout thing. So every, all the artists can hang out on Mondays. I think it's from 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern time. So you can go and check that out as well. I haven't even had a chance to go check it out because it's so brand new. So with that said, uh, I hope you enjoyed the talk and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.